If you are anything like me and always keeping an eye on awards, you have probably seen this website before. Not only did this portfolio win site of the day, but it also clinched site of the month. When I first checked it out, I overlooked the incredible carousel, maybe because I thought it was built using 3JS or something else. However, last weekend, I decided to give it a shot. After spending a few hours, I managed to recreate a very close replica using only JavaScript and GSAP. I successfully implemented all the animations including the smooth slider movement, dynamic text animations based on the slider's direction and even the subtle background color changes. In today's video, we are going to build this slider using just HTML, CSS, JavaScript and GSAP. We'll also ensure it's fully responsive so it works on smaller screens as well. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. For access to the source code, check out CodeGrip Pro via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code without any further ado. We'll be constructing most of the slider using JavaScript so our HTML will be minimal. First, let's create a container. Inside the container, we'll add a navbar and a footer with some placeholder links. Next, we'll add a div called background overlay which will animate its background color when this light changes. Then we'll add the slider nav. We'll generate and render the indices dynamically using JavaScript so we can leave this div empty for now. Next, we'll create a slides div where our slides will be rendered. Finally, we'll add the slide title section. Let's divide this into two rows. Inside each row, we'll add seven spaces to hold the letters of the title. We'll create span elements for each letter later using JavaScript. And that's it for the HTML. Now let's move on to styling. Let's begin by setting a universal selector to reset all default margins and paddings and ensure every element uses border box for box sizing. For the HTML and body, we assign a width and height of 100% and set the font family. Next we define our container to take up the entire viewport width and height. We also hide any overflow to ensure our content stays within the viewport boundaries. For the nav and footer, we fix their position so they remain at the top and the bottom of the viewport, respectively. Both will span the full width of the viewport, have padding for spacing, and use flexbox to space out their child elements. We also assign a higher Z index to ensure they stay on top of other elements. In the nav, we position the logo link slightly higher for better alignment and use a specific font and size to make it stand out. The background overlay will cover the entire viewport with a background color that we will animate later. We also apply a brightness filter and set its opacity for a subtle effect. The slider nav is positioned at the top center of the viewport. We use flexbox to space out its items evenly. Each navigation item will have smooth transitions for any changes in their state. We define a nav item wrapper to flex and center its contents. This will expand when active, creating a visual cue for the current slide. Inside, the nav item will have a border that becomes more prominent when the wrapper is active. The slides container is positioned to cover the viewport and extends horizontally well beyond it, creating a long scrolling area. Each slide is centered within this container.
Within each slide, we'll place an image that takes up half the width and height of the slide with reduced opacity to blend it within the background. The slide title is centered in the viewport consisting of two rows of letters. Each row is flexbox based with equal spacing for each letter. The second row is offset to create a staggered effect. Each letter is styled to take up the equal space within the row and will have a clipping path for the ripple animation. The letters themselves are styled with a unique font, large size and filters to achieve the desired look. Finally, for responsive design, we make adjustments for smaller screens than 900 pixels. The slider now becomes wider, the images in the slides grow, and the title adjusts its position and size to ensure everything remains visually appealing and functional on smaller devices. And that's the detailed CSS setup. Now let's move on to JavaScript to bring the slider to life. I have defined the titles data file to efficiently organize and manage our slide titles. Each array within the titles represents a title for a slide, divided into two rows. Each row contains the individual letters that make up the words for the top and bottom rows of the title. By structuring our titles this way, we can dynamically generate and animate each letter within the titles using JavaScript and GSAP. The empty strings in each arrays allows us to maintain specific spacing layout seen in the original design. Now of course there can be many approaches to building this slider but I found this method to be the simplest. The main reason for this choice was to achieve the precise spacing between letters that we needed for the design. Let's import the titles from our data file. Once the DOM content is loaded, we start by registering the GSAP plugin called Custom Ease. We create a custom easing function named hop to give our animations that smooth easing effect. Next, we select various elements from our HTML, the slider navigation, the slides container, the background overlay, and the slide title container. We also define a constant for the number of items in our slider and initialize the current index to zero. We then create a function to generate random colors for our background overlay animation. This function generates a random hex color code. We start by defining a string of hexadecimal characters. Then we initialize an empty string with a hash symbol, which is the beginning of a hex color code. Next, we use a for loop that runs six times, once for each character in the hex color code. Inside the loop, we randomly select a character from the letter string and append it to our color string. By the end of the loop, we have a full six character hex color code, which we then return. Next, we define the update title function, which updates the title of the slide based on the new index and the new background color. We start by fetching the title corresponding to the new index from our titles array. Then we select all the rows within the slide title container. Then for each row, we select all the letter elements. We then iterate over each letter element. We check if the letter element already contains a span. If it does, we remove the existing span to ensure we start fresh. Next, we create a new span element and set its initial position based on the direction of the slide transition. If the new index is greater than the current index, the direction is positive, indicating a forward slide. Otherwise, it's negative, indicating a backward slide. We also set the color of the span to the new background color. We then set the text content of the span to the corresponding letter from the titles array. If there is no letter, we set it to an empty string. We then append the span to the letter element. Finally, we animate the span from its initial position to zero over a duration of one second using our custom hop easing function. We add a slight delay to stagger the animation for a smoother effect. 
This function is crucial for dynamically updating the titles with smooth transitions and ensuring they match the new slide's background color. Now let's create the slider and navigation items dynamically. We loop through the number of items we defined earlier. For each iteration, we create a new div for the navigation item wrapper and add the class NavItemWrapper to it. If it's the first item, we also add the class Active to highlight it. Inside this wrapper, we create another div for the navigation item and add the class NavItem. We append this navigation item to the wrapper and then append the wrapper to our slider navigation. We add a click event listener for each navigation item wrapper. When clicked, it checks if the clicked item is already active. If not, it removes the active class from all navigation items and adds it to the clicked item. We calculate the new transition value for the slides container based on the index of the clicked item. Using GSAP, we animate the slide transition smoothly. We also generate new random background color for the overlay and animate this color change using GSAP. The update title function is called to update the slide title to match our new slide. Next, we create the slide itself. We add the class slide to it and if it's the first slide, we also add the active class. Inside each slide, we create an image wrapper and an image element. setting the source and alt attributes of the image. We then append the image to the wrapper and the wrapper to the slide. Finally, we append the slide to the slides container. After setting up all slides and navigation items, we call the update title to initialize the title of the first slide using the current background color of the overlay. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.